Finesse Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. I hope and trust. I find you all, my dear friends. We have the privilege of meeting and continuing from our presentation on Monday, where we are at Mount Horeb. And our discussion for this morning is Go Back. Come with me to the book of 1 Kings. We are still at chapter 19. We want to read from verse 11 and make our way to verse 18. The Bible provides as follows. We're reading from 11b. At that moment, the Lord passed by. A great and mighty wind was tearing at the mountains and was shattering cliffs before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a voice, a soft whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Suddenly, a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, he replied. But the Israelites have abandoned your covenant torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I am alone and left behind, and they are looking for me to take my life. Verse 15, Then the Lord said to him, Go and return by the way you came to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you are to anoint Hazael as king of Aram. 16, you are to anoint Jehu son of Nimshi as king over Israel and Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Mehola as prophet in your place. Then Jehu will put to death whoever escapes the sword of Hazael and Elisha shall put to death whoever escapes the sword of Jehu. Verse 18, I love this one, but I will leave 7,000 in Israel every knee that has not bowed to bow, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Let us spend a moment in prayer together, my dear friends. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, we come back to our Sinai's. We come back to our Horebs of prayer. Dear Lord, may you talk to us. Give us what we need, not what we want to hear, and send us on a mission one more time. May you revive us. May you repair us. May you even refurbish us from within. Fill us with thy spirit. This has been our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name, we pray and we ask, Amen. Good friends, why don't we raise our usual five points before we go our separate ways. We find herein, the prophet of God has run all the way, I mentioned on Monday, 538 kilometers and as he has arrived, he is in this cave by night and he is at Mount Sinai. You cannot afford not to ask the question, why Mount Sinai? What happened at Mount Sinai? Fast forward, then this is the part where uh, Elijah is back at Mount Sinai. Rewind, you're going to find Moses at this very mountain. He is beyond, before a burning bush. That was Mount Sinai, and the bush was not being consumed by the fire. And the Lord says, take off your sandals, for this place is holy. Secondly, what happened at Mount Sinai? The children of Israel have uh, remained in Egypt. Moses goes out and he delivers them on their way back. They stop at Sinai again so that the Lord can speak to Moses one more time. And he speaks to Moses face to face. Not only does he speak to Moses, he also then says, Moses, this time around, we are now in Exodus chapter 19, invite the children of Israel that I may speak to them and they may hear from me. God gives them the Ten Commandments and they hear his voice and they say, Moses, enough is enough. Let God speak to you. Whatever he tells you, that we shall do. And Moses at Mount Sinai receives the Ten Commandments Having received the Ten Commandments, now Elijah is headed back to the same place. When he gets to Mount Sinai, he then finds that first of all, there is a wind, a gust of wind, but God is not in the wind. There is an earthquake. 
God is not in the earthquake. There is a fire, but God is not in the fire. Instead, God is in a still, small voice. Before we leave the book of Exodus, when the children of Israel came over, God actually said, let nobody come anywhere close to the foot of the hill. Not even a stray animal is allowed to come close. It will die. What, what, what then went on to, to, to happen? There was a, an earthquake. There was thundering. There was fire. There was a storm. And in the storm, smoke began to rise up and fill up the, 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 the whole mountain. As the Mount Sinai was enveloped by this smoke, the word came from God and the Bible says his voice thundered through the mountain. And as Moses spoke to God, God answered with a voice. Now Elijah has come to the same mountain. No more does the voice of God thunder, but the voice of God is soft. The voice of God is mellow. The voice of God is sweet. It talks to Elijah. And I want to say unto you, the old time religion is not about seeking lightnings and thunder, but the old time religion is always about listening out for the voice of God. We seek as thus saith the Lord at all times. We do not seek miracles. We do not need, need wonders. We do not need threatening and fear. But the voice of God, whether it's going to be at a register that is harsh or a register that is soft, we still need the voice of God. This is what Elijah has come all the way so that he can hear from God. In the presence of God, we seek to hear from him. Point number three. I want you to also notice something about the tone of God. When God speaks to Elijah, he speaks, he, he gives him a question. What are you doing here, Elijah? This is the second time he's being asked this question and he goes on to give the same response. But for now, let me zero in on God's approach. God's approach is that he will always investigate first. He always asks questions. Go back to the book of Genesis. He is now looking for Adam and Eve. And the, the Bible says he was had walking through the garden by the cool of the day. And he inquired, Adam, Eve, where are you? And when they appeared before him and when the whole issue was done, God even tops it off with the question, what is this you have done? You know, I love the way God uses the inquisitory approach. He does not use the adversarial approach. He doesn't accuse us. That spot is already taken. There is the accuser of the brethren. But God, in spite of his foreknowledge, he wants to inquire, what are you doing here? You know, I love the way God wants to understand us. God wants to come to our level and he wants to give us a, 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 an option. He wants to give us a platform to vent and, and, and express ourselves. Now, as we look at this simple question that God puts to Elijah, we covered it briefly on Monday. It is a simple question. And, and I want you to appreciate this. Simple questions do not always have simple and straightforward answers. That is a problem with humanity. We are given a simple question and we should be giving simple answers, but we just can't. What are you doing, Elijah? If I was in Elijah's shoes, simple answer, I'm running for my life. I am afraid and alone because of this, your cause, oh God. He has come 538 kilometers to accuse God. God, you left me alone. God, you left me unprotected. God, you have not preserved my life. I had to take matters into my own hands. And I love the way God then responds at point number five. How does God respond? The man has been on foot for 538 kilometers and all that God has done so far, feed him twice, send him an angel twice, and he allows him to walk the 538 kilometers only to get to Mount Horeb. And listen to what God says at point number five. Go and return the way you came. He will not teleport him like Philip, but he says, you have walked 538 kilometers. 
I will allow you to do a return trip that will leave you at one, uh, is it 1,000? Um, about about 1,076 kilometers or something like that. You are going to walk back that return trip. Why are you on this return trip to go and do the work that I sent you to do? What is God's work? God has sent him to minister. God has sent him to speak on behalf of God to the people. And this is what you're going to do when you get there. Remember, your mission remains clear. You continue on the Lord's work. We are called to work for the Lord. We need to work before the night comes when man works no more. We have no business hiding in caves because the work is difficult. We have no business walking 500 kilometers to run away and preserve our lives. When we get to God, this is what he says. Go back the way you came. When you get there, the first thing you're going to do, you are going to anoint Hazael. I, I love the way the Lord works. Number one, you're going to anoint Hazael. Why are, are you anointing Hazael? So that whoever is going to escape from Hazael is going to have um, a, a second step to deal with. You're going to anoint Jehu as king. Whoever escapes, Jehu will deal with them. After Jehu, you're also going to anoint uh, Elisha, who will take up from you. All these three will continue the work of the Lord. It's about the Lord's mission. And I'm going to retain in Israel 7,000 who have not bowed to Baal. 7,000 who have not kissed Baal. What is God saying now? God is answering this question. This cause is a cause that does not begin and end with you, Elijah. It is a cause that is going to outlive you. It is a cause that I can plan for. And there are people who are going to be taking over from you, from the political space, from the neighbors, and directly after you. You are not the beginning and end of the mission, Elijah. Number two, you are not alone. You may feel like you're the only righteous one, but there are 7,000 who have not kneeled, knelt. There are 7,000 who have not kissed bow. Take time to introspect. When you are feeling alone, this mission is bigger than all of us. We may feel despondent and all alone like it is not moving, but there are 7,000 more who are faithful to the Lord. And the Lord ends with these words unto you. Go back, go back. Go and do your job. Go back. Go back. The cave is not your place to be. May the good Lord prosper you and keep you and even send you back to the mission until we meet again on Monday. Blessings and peace.